Today on Earth Focus, the risks of natural gas development in the Marcellus Shale, from toxic chemicals in drinking water to unregulated dumping of potentially radioactive waste. Are the health consequences worth the economic benefits? Coming up on Earth Focus. It's called Marcellus Shale, and it contains enough natural gas to supply all U.S. gas needs for 14 years. But gas development here can be a catastrophe in the making. Toxic chemicals and methane gas seep into drinking water. And now, experts fear something worse, radioactive radium in waste products. The gas business may be booming, but at what price for people? Britain's Ecologist TV explores the social and ecological consequences of gas extraction in the Marcellus Shale in this original investigative report. This is Bradford County, northeastern Pennsylvania. This previously quiet corner of America is now at the center of a rush for natural gas extracted through a new drilling technology called hydraulic fracturing, also known as fracking. But as the ecologist discovered, fracking is a high-risk process that threatens to both destroy the environment and wreck lives. It makes me mad. It makes me very mad. Because my life is over without my water. And there was just like this red, nasty water just coming, just oozing out the side of the mountain, just the side of the hill. And now hydraulic fracturing is heading for Europe. The UK, Poland, France and Germany are all next in the frac firing line. This is a picture postcard part of America, but beneath these rolling hills lies a seam of gas-rich rock called Marcellus Shale. But the shale gas is far from easily accessible. The process itself is that you drill down uh, a few thousand feet into a layer of very dense shale, turn the well horizontally, go out um, and perform some other operations. Eventually you uh, set off charges that blow holes in the pipe and then you fill up the pipe with a liquid and the intent is basically to get sand back in the cracks of the rock to hold it apart so the gas will flow. Gas drilling sites or frac pads as they are known have begun to appear all over the countryside but these are just the tip of the iceberg. Professor Tony Ingrafia is one of the world's leading pioneers of fracture mechanics. Uh, the fact is that Pennsylvania is three years into a 30-year large-scale industrial development. There are fewer than 2,000 Marcellus wells in Pennsylvania right now, but they're drilling them at the rate of four to five per day, and the rate at which they're being drilled is increasing. The industry intends to drill between three and 5,000 wells per year for the next 30 years in Pennsylvania and if they get their way in New York. With many farmers struggling to remain profitable, the large royalty payments offered for land means that many are readily selling off their mineral rights. For others, there is also the promise of new jobs. And on a national level, it is argued that shale gas is a step towards energy independence. But in the rush to drill, concerns about the potential risks of fracking are being swept aside. When I first heard about shale drilling, uh, it sounded like a pretty good idea. The thing that really got me interested uh, and concerned <clears throat> was I found out that under the proposed regulations for New York State, you could drill a gas well 150 feet from this river or the lake that feeds it, uh, which is the water source for this village. Um, and that's just insane. One of the first problems observed in communities close to intensive fracking sites has been the contamination of domestic water supplies. The ecologist spoke to families who have been unable to drink water from the tap since the gas companies started fracking on land close to their homes. And I didn't tell Ronnie anything about it until probably a couple days later because it, it got worse. I thought, maybe this will go away. I don't know what it is, but it didn't. And I said to him, I said, you know, we have a problem with our water. Water is a commodity. You might not think it is when you have it and it's good, but when you lose it, it's gone. You'll never get it back. Like we would take a glass of water out of the tap and it would have like an oil base on the top. You could smell it 
would smell like diesel fuel it found or some it. kind of oil thing. You know, I, I used to go to my sink and get a glass of water. I can't do that anymore. I, I have to put lotion on my hands three times a day from using the water and even wash my dishes or wash my clothes or anything. Meanwhile, increased levels of methane gas in water supplies have been reported in areas of intensive drilling. This is the water that's in my well, and supposedly I'm supposed to be drinking it. One of the key problems with the fracking process is its reliance upon huge volumes of water that are combined with an array of harmful chemicals. Carolyn Knapp is an organic farmer. I don't believe that they should be allowed to put chemicals into my ground, chemicals that are not allowed by my certification to be put in the ground, um, chemicals that I feel can do harm to my family, to the people around me, and I don't feel, I feel violated. None of those chemicals are potable. Uh, you know, methanol, hydrochloric acid, ethylene uh, glycol, it's about half of 1% of the fracking fluid is a chemical, or is it really a cocktail of chemicals? And, but, but think of, but do the math on that. That means that that's 5,000 gallons per well is chemicals, or toxic chemicals that goes in. So if there's eight wells per pad site, that's, that's 40,000 gallons of toxic chemicals. And we're losing farms far too quickly as it is, and to have one more, um, circumstance that makes us lose the farms quicker is all the quicker that they'll be gone. There will be no more small family farms. The rush for gas has had other effects on the local community. Small towns have become clogged with gas industry trucks. I have to say the days of having a nice conversation sitting out in front of the diner are long gone. Main Street's noisier and louder now than ever as a result of the large trucks that the industry requires, they run nonstop 24 hours a day through town and yeah, the noise is louder than ever. Whilst the increase in traffic represents an inconvenience for local people, the high volume of trucks point to far more serious problems. Once the chemicals are injected and the fracturing process is complete, a large percentage of that fluid comes back up. So we have purposely polluted large quantities of fresh water with chemicals that do not belong in the human environment. And now we have the responsibility, the industry and the landowners have a responsibility to dispose of them properly. But we're talking enormous quantities. Whereas energy-rich Texas has over 11,000 disposal wells, the temperate geography of Pennsylvania means that only a few exist, hardly enough to cater for the thousands of wells planned in coming years.